Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm at First Congregational Church in Columbus, Ohio, and with me is organist Kevin Jones. Kevin, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. It's nice to have you here. Well, thank you so much for letting us come in to see this organ. I'm really excited about this because we wanted to come here in 2020, uh, and unfortunately, everything got shut down. Uh, and the reason we wanted to come here is because the uh, Organ Historical Society Convention is going to be here in Columbus this year, and they have moved it now to 2022. And this is one of the organs that uh, attendees will get to see on the tour, so I'm really excited to be able to give people a preview of this organ. Tell me what we have here. That's great. So um, we, you have a 1931 four manual Kimball of 66 stops um, that has been completely restored in 2002 to four by local company Peebles Herzog. Um, and so it's, I understand that it's one of just a handful of extant unaltered Kimballs I think you're right, left yeah. in the country, which is really terrific. Um, we, we have a uh, a great choir swell, of course, and then a wonderful solo division. Um, everything is fully enclosed, which was Kimball's style. So the great pedal and choir are in one one expression pedal. The swell is on its own, and uh, the solo is on its own. In addition to that, we have an echo organ, okay. um, which is located in the gallery, which is now next to a 1972 three manual Baccarat organ. Uh, which is another splendid instrument, um, and you'll hear both at the convention, which, yeah, which is indeed, terrific. Completely different style instruments. Oh, you completely. Same and, you know, it's it's really um, it's an embarrassment of riches uh, in terms of musical expression on a Sunday morning and for concerts to have organs that are so um, uh, true to what they are, and yet they work well together. So it's. Uh, occasionally we'll play them together and it's it really does lift the roof <laughs> off the place it's it's really really exciting to be, it's be exciting so to hear, um, yeah. let's see I, I there's so many I think a lot of people think of this Kimball as you know the American symphonic color machine that it is and it is definitely a color for organ but as I've as I've come to know her and see see what she does it feels to me um, that it's much more in the lineage of a British cathedral organ than it is um, say an E.M. Skinner or something like that. And I think there is historical evidence about tonal directors and things like that, um, but um, it, 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 it plays Evensong very nicely. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, yeah, so I'll just take you through some stops if that's Please, all right. let's just start, I want to start over here in the grate. Let's Great, start with the so, so we have three diapasons because, you know, everybody needs three diapasons. Um, we have Good foundation. Mm -hmm. Second one. Third one gets a little bit even more gentle. In addition to that, you've got a gems horn. And then a beautiful open flute, a whole flute. is marvelous. Uh, and then we have a harmonic flute as well, four foot, um, which is really lovely. It's so unusual, I think, to hear the chiff <laughs> and this vintage, but yet there it, yeah, is, it is, and yeah. it's so lovely. Um, this, this organ, so many of these organs, um, we think it's just, oh, this wonderful blanket of eight foot sound, and it definitely is with this organ. But the chorus work on this organ is astounding and way ahead of its time. So if you pull the eight, the four, the two, the mixture, which is a four rank mixture, and it's a tierce mixture, oh. by the way, and we have a, a two and two thirds quint, and you put all of that together, and you've really got a convincing sound, you know? You know, on any other organ, you, you would mm. not hesitate to play Bach, right? right? It's just that we have a Baccarat <laughs> that plays Bach. So, but you really can get away with it, you know? That's surprising. I, I wouldn't have uh, expected that much brightness in it, the upper work. It definitely is surprising. And of course, vintage, yeah. you, you've also got a 16-foot double open diapason, which just sends everything right down to the earth, which is amazing. Yeah. 
astounding, yeah. <laughs> really astounding, right? So, uh, and then you've got a read chorus, which is a unified read, 16, 8, and 4. And uh, the, the interesting story about these reads on the great is that they were originally supposed to be the swell reads. Hmm. And the story is that when they got here and, and played the swell reads, that they were so disappointed in them that they thought, well, we really want the fire to be in the swell, not in the great. So they switched them out, oh. which I think was a good choice, you know, so. Now, this being June, I'm delighted that they're that in yeah. tune, I have to say. <laughs> and hopefully they still yeah. will be in August, but yeah. that's, a, that's a Kimball sound I recognize. Absolutely. Those bright, but still kind yeah. of restrained yeah. uh, trumpets. You know, several weeks ago, we did the Finzi God Has Gone Up, and it was just perfect, you know. It's just perfect for that kind of sound. Um, in addition, we have some fun things. We, we do have a, a real harp. So when you're feeling particularly angelic, yeah. you can do that. <laughs> and a marvelous set of chimes. So that, that rounds out yeah. the great. And all of that can be enclosed. I mean, it can be shut down with Absolutely. the great and choir box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Where do you want to go next? Well, let's just stay over here in that box and, and talk about the choir stops. Ah, choir. This is a lovely choir. English diapase in eight foot. Um, And if you compare that with the great, it's a really nice step down. Yeah, indeed. Um, we have a contra viola, which uh, comes in handy. It's also borrowed into the pedal. But I, 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 I am surprised to say, you know, if that were my only string on an organ, uh, I would take <laughs> it's, it. It's lovely, I would take yeah. It. So we have a melodia. is lovely. Yeah, very gentle. Um, a Dulciana Undamaris, which again is lovely. And of course, And add a little 32-foot board, and, and you've sent people somewhere that they've <laughs> that, never gone. That's with the box open. That's yeah, 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 that's great. <laughs> so, so we also have a flute. Um, which has an incredible amount of character. Yeah. Um, a two-foot piccolo. Um, and, and together, the flutes, eight, eight, two, eight, four, and two work very nicely. There's a Nassard two and two thirds thrown in for good measure. I'm not sure what, but you know, it's there. And some color. I think today our, 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 our ears want also a tear, something like mm -hmm. that. But this is your English choir, you know? <laughs> yeah. Now, as if that weren't enough, you also have this incredible clarinet. And then an orchestral oboe, which would, we're used to from E.M. Skinner Fair, but it's really nice. And we have these old school Kimball tremulos, which work or not, depending <laughs> on the day. But it's, it's a period sound. I don't think it's, it's maybe what we wouldn't want today, but mm -hmm. as far as a period sound, it really is quite nice. I think it's a little nicer on the clarinet. Yeah. It, it gives you a lot of options. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, well, uh, let's go over to the other side and I'm gonna hear what we have in the swell. Ah, swell is a, is a great uh, 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 division. We have 16 foot Borden, um, which really roots things down, but it starts with an open diapason. Very nice, solid. It's big, though. It's yeah, big. It's <laughs> bigger it's than really, I was expecting. Really, really big. You know, the, part of the success of this organ, I think, as an accompanying instrument, is that it sits, you know, it doesn't start until 20 feet in the air. So as far as a choir goes, it, it's over their heads, which again reminds me more of a British cathedral organ. Sure. So yeah. you can play quite full, and if they're really singing, <laughs> they can cut through. 
Yeah, which is great. Well, show us again. Compare that to just the great diapason, yeah. kind of where it sits so, in the line. So, swell, great, choir. Yeah. yeah, they're they're all pretty big to some extent, but I mean that was the style of Kimball at the time, of course. Yeah, I mean I think the scales are really generous. Um, the, you know, the organ was designed for the room. The room was also new in 1931, mm -hmm. yeah. and it sits completely at a 90 degree angle, but it seems to turn the corner incredibly That's successful. True. We are sitting right in front of the opening, yeah. whereas they're hearing what's out there in the room, so yeah. they may not it may not come across quite like that. It's slightly more gentle, but not much. <laughs> so, you know, there we are. So in, in, the, in the swell, getting back to the swell, we also have a clarabella. Lovely, complimental. Yeah. We also have a viola. I should have started with a viola, but... Now the great part is that that's not with a celeste. We also have a smaller string, a solitional, that has its own celeste. So here's the solitional. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, in addition to that, we have a spitz flute and a flute celeste, because who doesn't want a flute celeste, right? And with the super coupler, it really is quite lovely. Um, Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't get any better than that, you know? That's amazing. Um, so, so those are the eight foots. Oh, we also have the Gedeckt, <clears throat> which is um, my very bad boy stop in the swell. It's, it does not like to stay in tune. If you look at it crosswise, it goes out and it just takes it out on you all the time. So you know that's one, two, three, four, five, six eight foot ranks, not including Celeste's. It's, it, you've got a lot of color choice. Just curious, playing with some things, like what happens if you add, say, the viola to the open diapason? How much brightness does that give us? So here's the open diapason, just on a simple chord. And if we do that again, and I'll add the viola. It seems to mesh together really, really well. This has really been well. my limited experience with, Kil with Kimball organs, is usually those big strings were meant to sort of brighten up the other stops, not as much. If you, given that there's not a Celeste for it, and it's kind of there, um, that you can blend it with the flutes or the other, the clarabella or something to give you a completely different Absolutely. sound. Absolutely. And, and it sort of takes on that, that, um, that building of a, of a division that Cavalli Cole was doing, you know, where you have the mantra, you have the, the string, the flutes, all that, and it really gives that authentic sound. It's, it's lovely. And on the four foot level, we have an octave Geigen and a flauta traverso. Here's the octave with the open diapason. And that's what I was expecting, is that the four foot really isn't nearly as big as the eight, but then again, if you added something like the strings, then that would give you some extra brightness. Exactly. That would help you build, but you do keep and continue up with, well, let's hear that four foot flute. Yeah, first. the four foot flute is, is very interesting. Um, it's got a lot of character. A lot of character, a lot of speech in there. Um, I th the, there's a two foot flautina. And then if you put the, the clarabella, the flute, traverso, and the flautina together, you get a nice little, little thing here. Quite convincing if you have to. There is a dolce cornet, which of course is de rigueur on these, this period of instruments. Um, it's not... Um, and that's with the clarabella on. It's, yeah, it's, so. not, it's not bad at all. Um, it's just not where our ears are. Well, and as others have shown me, if, if you add that to the strings, it usually gives, that's where the real life comes out of that, and it adds some sizzle and brightness to your Celeste. Yeah, I, I mean, it's incredible. For me, the, the, the surprise in this swell division is this five-rank mixture. Oh, yeah. Um, because 
that's certainly something that I would not expect. Mm -hmm. But um, it really roots the fundamental in an incredible way, especially if it's added after the reads, oh. like you do, you know. Um, so in other words, if you're, if you're, you know, sort of having the, the, the reads going and then all of a sudden you add the mixture. So here's, here's the reads. Um, and then you add the mixture. There's a heaviness and a yeah. root to that sound that's really unique. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious. I just want to hear a little bit. Just let's. Um, what does the mixture sound like by itself? How is its volume level? So yeah, pretty substantial. Just curiosity. Uh, open diapason and an octave geigen in principle is that, or the mixture is that? Yeah, does that give very, you an effect of a chorus? It does. Um, It's convincing. It is, but you're still getting that diapason is the is the the bulk of what you're hearing. So obviously we're still trying to we're not building to the sky yet, but there's a surprising amount of brightness in this division. Yeah. Uh, but still retaining a lot of the characteristics that I would expect from a Kimball. To me it feels a little bit ahead of its time. Yeah. And and that's exciting. I mean, I think it's really exciting. Um, and then we have you know, five reeds and a beautiful oboe. Um, And then trumpet. And the clarion. And then you add the double trumpet. It's surprisingly bright and fiery for, yeah. again, Kemble from that period. This is the great reads are more what I would expect, but they definitely did something different there. Indeed. So, yeah. There is a Vox Humana. Uh, that's in its own box, way at the back of the <laughs> chest. It does have its own vibrato, which I don't think works terribly well. I don't think it works at all. Not. Yeah, um, but that, that's one of those things. And then there is a tremolo to the swell. These tremolos are very interesting. Um, they're the old style Kimball. I'm told by people who know far more than I do that Kimball never was really happy with this style of tremolos and, and sort of at somewhere between here and um, Denver switched them out to a different kind altogether, which are much more successful. Um, uh, give, given the requirements, the maintenance requirements of this organ, it's not been a huge priority for me, um, but it would have eventually been something I would have loved to have of, sure. of, of, of tracked down. Um, the fun part is that this is one of two Vox Humanas on this organ, oh, because who doesn't need two well, Vox that was Humanas? Yeah. yeah, so that's the Swell Division, which is really, really uh, complete and lovely and will play any English anthem you've ever wanted to play. So sticking with the manual divisions, let's go over to the solo, which is, has its own expression. Um, tell me what stops we have in the solo. Uh, we have a mellophone. Um, Wooden flute there, I assume. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> we have a string, a violoncello, is, which is lovely. With its own Celeste. I'm not sure it gets to the bacon frying, but it's pretty <laughs> close here. No, it's, a, it's a Kimball quality string there. That's there's an orchestral flute, four foot, which is, again, an overblown flute. Lovely, yeah. lovely flute. Um, sometimes I'll even do naughty things like play it at eight and two, you know. Lovely. It's incredibly versatile. I mean, everything is very versatile. Um, we're getting to the tuba, so be patient. Okay. Uh, now we have this incredible French horn, which is just lovely.
So the tremolo, mm -hmm. I just added the tremolo there, and it, it's very, it's very subtle. faint mm -hmm. in the French horn. It's a little bit better in the English horn, which is what we'll go to next. Just pleasing sound. <clears throat> and a really effective expression box, too. And then we get to the tuba mirabilis, which is really remarkable. <laughs> um, you know. It's impressive. Incredibly <laughs> commanding, right? So um, now I'm told that um, you get the full-on effect of the tuba if you sit over in the transept well, because <laughs> it's, it's right aiming there. right at you, you know, it's full barrel. But it's really, it's really incredible when you have, you know, a hymn, a festival hymn going on, and you can solo out that melody like we all want to do, mm -hmm. and it really does speak over full oh, organ. Sure. It's quite impressive. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful division that just gives you so many options. Mm -hmm. And then we have this echo yes. organ. Yes, now which manual does the echo? Echo plays on? on the solo manual okay. four, and you can shut the solo off and um, you can shut the echo off. The echo has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five stops of its own, and uh, a pedal stop, a board note at 16 foot. So okay. it's surprisingly rich. Um, let's see. It also is under expression. And it's speaking from a case in the gallery behind yes. the... Yes, in, in a beautiful case. I mean, it really is. <laughs> if you have time to go up there, well, it's We're definitely going to go up really there. Really lovely. <laughs> and then there's a Quintadena. Okay. It's not Baccarat's Quintadena. No, but it's it's definitely colorful and, and definitely colorful and stronger than you would yeah. I would expect out of an organ this period. No, definitely. And when you put the the Cor de Nuit and the Quintadena together, you get a convincing foundation sound. Um, it really, really does yeah. work. Um, there's a viola etaria, which is very ethereal for certain. but probably was never made to be heard without the Vox Angelica. And that completes, that completes one, two, three, four, <laughs> five Celestes on this organ, which is crazy. Um, then there's a Vox Humana, which, whose tremolo does work. Okay. Very exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and nice. actually there have been times when, um, there was a time several years ago when I had a, 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 an assistant organist here, and I think we were doing that Stephen Jackson, Noel Nouvelle arrangement, but the choir was upstairs. Um, but I wanted, the, I wanted the character of, and we actually did have someone play the echo organ, and it actually worked pretty well. <laughs> so, you know, you can have a lot of fun. Oh, I'm and, sure. You know. Um, All right, well, let's talk about the pedal. Yeah, the so the, the pedal division is typical of this era. There, there really are four independent stops, okay. you know, um, with four independent ranks with, you know, 739 ranks or stops. <laughs> so um, a lot of it's borrowed. The, the one wonderful, unique rank starts at 32, which is a full length 32 all the way back in the corner oh, wow. of the chest. And um, Mike Herzog once told me that he thought this stop was the soul of this building.
I'm not sure whether that will be heard at all. I'm not either, but it's uh, it, it's just present. It's not you're not hearing yeah. it; you're feeling it. And right. Uh, so, and that is duplexed at, at 16. At eight. And at four. A lot of power, but it's not very loud right. at all. So it's so the forefoot by itself is is quite interesting. I mean, you really can do solo things with it. Very clear and bright. There's a there's an open diapason at 16. First open diapason because again, everyone needs two open diapasons in the pedal. Um, which is, is um, sort of stodgy, but really undergirds things well. Sort of keeps, keeps things going. Um, and, and that's duplexed at eight foot. And that works well. Yeah. There's a second open diapason, which I think is borrowed from the grate. It's a little bit woolier, a little bit woolier. There's a 16 foot violone, which is actually the solo violoncello down an octave. It's duplexed. And that's a sound you just don't hear much. How great anymore. to have that ed cutting edge down so low. It's kind of lovely. Um, the Leiblitz Gedeckt uh, is borrowed from the swell, uh, the Borden 16 foot, as is a still a still Gedeckt, which is duplex there. Um, the remember the contra viola in 16 foot in the choir. Yeah, it's also available on the pedal, oh, which is two strings yeah. down there. <laughs> so you've got a lot of possibilities. Yeah. Um, the cello down here is again the violoncello from the solo. So you've got two of those. Um, and then you've got, you've, you've got 16 and 8 foot reeds in the pedal borrowed from the grate, the same reeds. But it's nice to have them because it's, it's a step down from the ophicleide. It's called trombone, which is a, this is one reed rank, 16, 8, and 4, called trombone 16, trumpet 8, and clarion 4. Um, but if you look at the pipes of the 16 foot, it's stamped ophicleide on it, which is definitely, you know, I mean, there's no mistaking this. So here's a 16 foot by itself. Kind of nice sound, you know? Yeah, and definitely. then when you add the trumpet to it. And then when you add the forefoot to it. Really, really works well. And then of course, when you do something like full organ, it really, really does work. Now, of course, the organ is complete, right? But there's one stop that's missing from this organ. What's that? And that would be a 32-foot reed. Well, true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you have all of, this, all of this wonderful stuff and you don't have a 32-foot reed, you sort of go, oh, I just wish I had that. <laughs> I need 12 pipes. But if you go up into the chambers, which you probably will later, you'll see why there's no 32-foot it, It's reed. usually it's the, it's, it's the things that people say they miss the most, but they're the hardest ones to actually yeah. shoehorn into an organ set. And, and I've thought over, over the years, although, I, you know, this is, to me, this is historic and shouldn't be messed with, um, but gosh, it would be nice. You know, it, we're a church with an active music program, so we're not a museum, so sometimes practicality just wins the day. That's true. You have to make those um, decisions. You do. And, and so I've thought, well, Walker Technical would be great. And those are very successful, but you can't, there's no room to even get a speaker <laughs> up there. So there's, there's no way it's going to happen. I'm just kind of looking at the dimensions of what's up there and looking at all of this and trying to imagine. I can't wait to go see what, uh, how they got it all in. It, it's incredible. I mean, you know, the organ failed in the late 60s, and mm -hmm. that's why the Baccarat came to be. At least that's the story that's yeah. told. I th if we're honest, those of us who lived through that era know that that's what everybody that's wanted, what wanted and it. people <laughs> were done with this. And I'm really delighted this has come back. Um, but the, I think what saved this organ 
was the fact that they couldn't get it out of the building. <laughs> um, there's a beautiful screen yeah. that they would have to take off and then crane everything out because there's just this little Lilliputian door to crawl no. through. <laughs> so, you know, it really saved it. And until the time came when this wonderful woman, Jean McNevin, uh, when she died, loved uh, this organ and just gave her entire estate to assure its survival, renovation, and I mean, it was an incredible gift that she gave this community. But it's it's remarkable to see it, and it's I think the latest Kimball I've seen, certainly the, in, in its uh, original incarnation. And the thing that jumps out to me is that it is forward-looking. We have this full chorus in the grate. We have a big mixture in the swell, and it makes me wonder if 1933 they were kind of leaning into like aliens. Skinner's G. Donald Harrison years. They were starting to grasp what other people were doing and trying to do it themselves, but definitely not losing their own character, especially with the use of the, so many strings down in the pedal. That's, that's the thing that jumps out to me is the, of the string quality, which Kimball's known for, and, and how well used they are and how well placed everything is. I mean, I've now spent nine and a half years loving this organ and playing this organ, and I have definitely grown immensely in my appreciation. and. Um, for Kimball, I, I think they were doing incredible things, and um, as were many people at that time. But they had a voice of their own. And um, if you compare the, the other Kimball that I know, not not nearly as well, but have heard on a number of times, is St. John's Cathedral, Denver, and that's I think 1936. I hope I'm not wrong about that. But it has many of the similar qualities, but it's a very, very different instrument. Mm -hmm. And I think that that shows the brilliance of a firm that can be so versatile like that. I, I think it's marvelous. So here is the uh, Lilliputian door that was mentioned that gives us access into the chamber. And we start by walking into the grate. There's some pedal pipes along the wall. That's the 32 foot Borden. And we go up onto that walk board and now we are at the level of the grate pipes. So the grate diapasons are right here in the front. First, second, and third. There's the 16-foot double open diapason against the wall there. And the choir is above us. So looking out through the shades, we see the old swell motors are still there even though they've been replaced with new electronic ones. Toward the back of the chest, we see the reeds, eight and four on the chest, and then the 16 foot is back behind there. It descends into the pedal tromba on its own chest. The lowest notes don't have tuning scrolls or flaps cut in them. They have these little uh, valves on top that can be used for adjusting the voicing. back up to the front. There's a ladder here, and the ladder takes us up to the choir, so up the ladder we go. There we are, and we are here at the choir with the orchestral oboe right in front. Very skinny little thing. There's the pedal pipes in the back, and then above us is the harp.
There's looking down into the 16 foot open diapason. Okay, we're back on the grate. We're at the back part of the chest and there is this ladder here. If we go up, and that lets us get to the other side of the choir chest. So here we are, there's pedal pipes right here. It's the pedal borden next to us. If we look over, there's the chimes behind it. Some other pipes back there. And these, instead of tuning stoppers or flaps, have just these little hinge uh, fins. I'm not sure what the proper word for those is. And you can see out into the choir. Clarinet's on the back. There's the harp box from behind. That's the first open diapason. And you can see the pedal down below. This is a whole flute. We're getting the lowest of the pedal, 32. All right, back down in the grate. Now we gotta go down through that little flap. So there we are, down underneath the grate now. Here's our contraborden. Got the pedal tromba here in front of us. So we've got to squeeze through this little opening here. And now we're back with the pedal borden again, looking up into the grate. And there's our biggest pipe in the organ, low C of the contra borden. We find a door here at the wall of the chamber. It takes us into a brightly lit room, which has all the relay components and the tremolos for the entire organ are all in this room, all in a big stack. including the Vox Humana tremolo, which is a different style than the others. Some spare parts there. And another door takes us into the solo division. Just the first thing we see is the tuba mirabilis and the hearing protection required to tune it. Here against the wall, we have the string, which is the violone. That would be miter to fit in this space. And then the bottom octave of the tuba is also next to it. Now we're up on the chest. This is the uh, mellophone, a big wood flute in the solo. And here we are looking out over the rest of the pipes of the solo division. French horn and core on play are in front. A close up look at the tuba. As we head back out of the organ, there's one last look at the pedal chest and access to them inside the great choir chamber.
Kevin, thank you so much for showing us. It's 1931 Kimball, Oregon, here at First Congregational, site of one of the Oregon Historical Society's events uh, coming up this summer. Uh, do you know who's performing here? Damon Spritzer. Damon Spritzer. She is a board member of the Oregon Media Foundation and a friend of mine, so I'm very happy she does fantastic work with uh, these kind of symphonic style instruments. So that's going to be a great concert. You won't want to miss it, and you can be part of it. Uh, just go down to the description, and there's a link where you can register for the OHS 2022 convention here in Columbus. There's also a link where you can become a sponsor of the Oregon Media Foundation and help us make Make more videos. Uh, you can become a sponsor like Richard Fortney, who became a video sponsor this year and made this possible. So thank you to Richard and thank you to all of you who helped support these videos. We'll have some more videos coming up from the OHS location, so make sure you're subscribed to our channel and click the bell for notifications. And if you like the fantastic job Kevin did demonstrating this instrument, uh, give us a thumbs up uh, and we'll be happy to uh, bring you more stuff like this. But until then, uh, you can always get streaming classical organ music on our three stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Kevin, thank you again so much. This has been a wonderful instrument to experience. It's our pleasure to have you. Here. I'm glad we could bring it to our viewers. I'm Brent Johnson. Thank you for watching.